Hey guys, Ryan Earnhardt here from creativesoundlab.tv. Today we're gonna to be talking about how I wired the studio. It's a bit, uh, seems a bit crazy, and I really wanna give you some food for thought on the cost of running a studio. Let's get started. Okay, so first of all, um, how much would you expect uh, it would take to wire up just a desk and some extra stuff uh, how much wiring and how much money would you expect that would take? Um, I was thinking maybe 300 bucks. It was like twice that. And I used like HOSA cables, which are like the cheapest you can find. And I went with the prefab cables uh, because, well, to be honest, I'm not really like, you know, I'm not like yanking, yanking the cables a ton. I have Mogami. I wish I could have afforded Mogami. But I think it was like 250 for an eight channel TRS snake, and it was 50 bucks for a Hosa equivalent snake. It's amazing how just a medium, I'd still consider myself a small studio, how much wiring it actually takes to make this place run. I'm just absolutely amazed. I pretty much just went down the line and I needed cables fast. I needed cables that worked and that I could uh, rely on and that looked clean because my back of the desk and everything is very visual. It's been in the videos. I need stuff that looks okay. So this is the cables that I used. Now uh, this is TRS going in the TRS patch base. Again, you know, I didn't go for the higher end professional patch bay. Um, I don't really rent out my studio that much, so uh, I'm pretty sure this will be okay, right? I have to kind of know where I sit with things, and I'm, I'm pretty much okay not having to get um, more expensive expensive patch cables, more expensive patch bays. Um, if I had experience converting old patch bays from maybe an old studio, I might go with that, actually. I'd be okay with that. But again, I needed speed here, okay? My time is money. I cannot get back my time. I can always get back my money by investing and getting it back. Can't get back my time. So this is really about time here. So again, okay, probably not the most sexiest choice, but I went with Hosa because it works. Okay, and then I, I split the cable by hand, split it all the way down to make it so that I could run really the you know, entire length of the desk. Now, they come in all male, so I have one snake for the sends, and then another female end for the receives going back. So I do it basically um, snakes of eight. So a while ago, I did a video on how I set up my patch bay and the fact that I connect my uh, audio snake right into the back of the preamps. And I actually don't mind doing that still, but because I do so much and I need the flexibility, I wanted, I wanted some uh, some speed. So I went ahead and got another patch bay, and I'm running the mics into a TRS patch bay. I'm running phantom phantom power through that patch bay. Now the uh, the compromise here. I really didn't want to do this because I didn't want to screw up my mics. I use a lot of ribbon mics. I didn't want to take the risk of applying phantom power on a normal or half normal patch bay, and then, you know, you pull a plug, and all of a sudden it normalizes to the jack below it, applying phantom power to a mic. Not to mention the whole TRS bit of connectors touching other connectors. Bam, you have a problem. So the compromise to this is that I would not half normal the patch bay. So I have to actually have cables for every single, uh, every single snake output coming in, and then uh, the preamp input has to be manually patched. So that way I can visually see what's going on. And it's not much different than plugging a mic cable. I just make sure, okay, is the phantom off for that channel? Okay, it's off and I can visually see what's going on. That was kind of my way of compromising. I would love to do some XOR patch bays, but then you have added cost of, you know, the space in the rack, the patch bays, the uh, XOR cables. Uh, so it was a significant cost um, by not half normalizing the patch bay, I can visually see and minimize the risk and the confusion in the middle of a busy session by applying, you know, phantom power to a ribbon or something like that. So 
uh, we have a patch bay down on the floor here. Because of all those cables, uh, I kept it low. And because I used the host of cables, I was able to get links. Like sometimes the four meter was the same cost as like the three meter or the two meter. So I bought the four meter cable. And because of that, it actually bought me some space and some flexibility. So now I have the, um, the preamp, the l mic level um, patch bay down below me here, out of the way because of all the mess with the cables. And that keeps everything uh, separated. So mic level, phantom power, it's all going through this patch bay down here. And then anything line level is here at the desk. Okay, so we have preamp outs at the top, and then it's half normal to the Mo2 end. So I don't have to patch that manually like I am the snake. Um, they are half normal to the inputs. So uh, right now, one's going automatically into one, two is going automatically into two. Now, if I wanted to split that off, I could put a jack on the top, run it to a compressor, and record it at adjacent at an adjacent input. So. Um, I could make a copy that way, but if I put a plug in the bottom, then it bypasses, and that's what goes into the input. So it's half normal. Um, see my other video about how to really uh, do that. It's better explanation, but it's half normal into the mode two. So there you go. That's in the same patch bay because of that. Uh, then we have preamps out. These are all just for videos. So I'm going to go ahead and like install microphones for the window shot, install microphones in my front room as a reverb chamber, leave this microphone here. These are all driven by these preamps here. Um, so I'm going to use the warm audios as kind of my instrument, um, vocal, my actual studio preamps, and use these as my video production preamps. So that's all here in the top uh, in the top patch bay. Then the next one down is my processing. So I have all the, um, it's just uh, straight connections. They're not normal to half normal or anything like that. It's just straight connections. So um, the outs are at the top, the ends are in the bottom, and I have all my EQs, my compressors, uh, things like that. Then I have a, some expansion on the f very far right, 17, 17 through 21 is my expansion. Again, you know, if I get something in and I want to make a video on it, um, I don't have to rip apart my current setup to make a video on it. This is part of the reason why the studio just got out of control. <laughs> okay, it was just totally out of control. Mixer Man came over one day and he's like, oh my gosh, like, <laughs> how does it get this bad? I'm like, well, this is what happens when you do like five or six videos back to back on different topics, rip apart the room and never put it back. Uh, so expansion is very important. So we don't have to take apart anything that I have going. Uh, and then the bottom, uh, the bottom patch bay is actually kind of the coolest one um, because I've never had something like this. So I can manually patch in the A and the B, um, A and the B, for the monitor, um, big knob passive. Um, I can uh, patch in a headphone line that I have run to the back of this room here. Um, I also have uh, reamp outs, one, two, and three. So I have two guitars and one for bass for reamping. Um, I have uh, some chamber feeds, so chamber one, chamber two. Um, the really don't have to be in stereo because a lot of times you're just reamping a vocal to, well, I say reamping, but you're feeding a vocal into a single monitor out in the other room. So you really only need one. Um, then I have some laptop input. So I have a laptop in the back of the room here with that little Behringer, uh, 404 HD, whatever the heck it's called interface. It's a four channel interface. And so here I can record um, the stereo outputs of Logic or Ableton Live or Pro Tools or whatever it is that I'm using without worry of hitting the space bar and killing my recording. Uh, so I can feed a microphone, I can feed two or really just four outputs of whatever I'd like into my laptop. Above it, I have some um, outputs for that laptop. So I can be sitting in the back of the room, I can be uh, watching a video or whatever, and I can kick it to the front here and patch the sound of that into 
uh, the sound of my monitors. Here we have the TB12 inserts. That is something I've never actually had the access to either. So these are actually going into the middle of the circuit of the TB12. It's really cool. Now what's cool about this is that um, they're half normaled, just like the preamp out to the Motu N, and they're half normal because you need these connected for the preamps to work. But you can intercept the signal, throw it into a compressor, and put that compressor or an EQ before the output stage of that preamp. Pretty cool. Uh, it's just like an insert on a like a console, um, but it's two jacks instead of one. Uh, and then we have uh, summing uh, out left, summing out right. Uh, and we have the TB12 line one, TB12 line two. So if I want to use that, I just hit the line on the TB12s. It goes and colors the sound. Um, that would be something that I do with a uh, like a test tone to get the, the, the signals perfectly balanced between left and right, and then play the mix through there. I don't have a summing anything yet. That's just for the future. Uh, that is connected to the, to the line as, as it is right now. It's connected to the line input. But the summing, it would be, um, I would probably put the Motu out on its own patch bay and then the summing input half normal right below that so that it goes right to the summer, probably a, uh, a DIY RE uh, summing box. Uh, um, I think they make them, they're like a two, two bank DB25 summing boxes and they need uh, a boost afterwards. So I'm planning ahead and hey, I might do that. Mixer Man has been talking to me about compression techniques, stereo bus. I mean, we talked about this and summing uh, techniques as well. So uh, I'm just allowing for expansion for that. Um, so if that ever happens, that'll go, that can go here. Now, again, I'll split off the Motu out into its own thing, but I don't have to mess with this patch bay necessarily. That's a little bit about how I have the studio wired up right now. Uh, it's pretty cool. I'm really, really feeling accomplished for a dude that doesn't necessarily do a lot of like organization every single, uh, every single day. It's, it's like a mode I have to be in. I feel really accomplished. I'd love to hear uh, anything that you have to share about your own studio, what you like to do. Um, I've never really worked in a huge studio where I've really experienced how they have the patch bay hooked up. So this is kind of my best guess with the main outs at the bottom here, preamps toward the top. Anyways, uh, I'll let you go. I'll be hanging out. Comments below. Yeah.